Hello everyone, Namaste. My name is Lucky Lager. Thank you for watching this video. I'm right here, right at this moment, with the top astrologer in Singapore, May Sim. This is actually May's second video with me, right? If you would like to watch the first video, do subscribe to my channel and search to right in the beginning. Okay, thank you, May, for being with us again. Thank you for interviewing me, Luke. Yeah. Astronomy is actually the study of how the properties positions and motions of celestial objects in our universe and whereas astrologers like me they are actually studying how these movements and properties of these celestial objects affect everyday life here on earth mm -hmm. is that right me yes that's right so we basically astrologers interpret the meaning of the placements of planets so yeah that would be right okay may could you tell us a little bit about your background and history how long have you been an astrologer I've, uh, this is my 12th year practicing, so I started um, in 2004. Oh, 12 years is a very long time. <laughs> yeah, so uh, like most people, I started as a hobbyist and yes. then it, it got serious very quickly. Uh, so I, I actually pursued uh, formal education in astrology. So I will graduate from the International Academy of Astrology in August this year. Uh, and from my knowledge, I will be the first Asian to graduate. That's awesome. Congratulations on that. Right, yes, there's a reason why she's a top astrologer in Singapore because of her passion. She's been doing this for so long, and not only do you study, it's probably a lifelong learning because it's very complex and complicated. But not only you study, you also teach others. You actually conduct classes on astrology. Right? What do you tell to people that, who think that you know, astrology is nonsense, it's superstitious, but yet on the other hand, there are actually people who just swear by it, right? and they are reading their horoscopes every day. So, what's your take on this? Um, that's quite simple because um, astrology got popularized because then you get to read horoscopes in magazines, newspapers, or sometimes you get astrologers uh, on videos. Yeah, the, the only thing is that such um, bite-sized horoscopes are usually based on your sun sign. So you would know if you're an Aries or a Scorpio. So most people know their sun signs. So, but you would realize that it doesn't make sense that the whole human population would be divided into just 12 categories. And that's why most intelligent people say, I don't think this works, right? But what, what happens is that if you look at the solar system, it's not just the Earth that's going around the Sun, you've got all these other planets going around the Sun as well. So we also look at the placements of all the other planets, and that's why um, a birth chart is unique to every individual. Yes, it makes sense, and it makes logical sense that way, because we're actually a composite of all the planetary alignments at the time of our birth. Mm -hmm. right? So it's not just the Sun size, you, you are also a, a mixture and combination of your Moon sign, your Ascendant sign, your Mid-Heaven sign, Venus and Mars sign. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Venus and Mars signs, I believe that these are the two signs that are related to our romance and love. And most people, when they think of horoscopes, it's kind of synonymous with finding love compatibility. Why do you think that's so? Why, why do you think people always you know, equate uh, horoscopes to, to finding a love match? Well, I mean, um, for most of my clients, um, the concerns are usually are pretty much the same for most people. The concern about their personal relationships, concern about money and things like that. So yes, you are absolutely right. So a lot of people come to me asking questions about their love life, right? Why, why Venus and Mars, right? So if for those of you who are familiar with Greek mythology, Venus and Mars are your very your male and female archetypes. Right? So everybody has these in their charts. Everybody has a Mars and everyone has a, has a Venus. So for a man, a Mars tells you what I should be like so that I'm like a man. Right? And Venus to him is what a woman should be like. And therefore, Venus describes the kind of woman that he's attracted to. He thinks she's awesome. Right? So for a woman, it's the opposite. So Venus basically, what sign her Venus is in tells her, this is what you should be like as a woman because that makes you attractive. Right? And, and Mars tells you what she's attracted to. The kind of man that she thinks is you know, macho and manly. Ah, right? fascinating. So the interesting yes. thing is that you would think that Mars um, must be like a big masculine sign. But yet there are women who are very happily married to men who they don't like to climb, uh, they don't like rock climbing, they don't like guns, they don't like action movies. Right? There are guys who like a quiet night in reading a book. Mm. Right? Or maybe they like cooking or maybe they really enjoy being with their kids. Right? Yeah. So plenty of women are very happy married to men who aren't your typical masculine archetype, right? So this is the reason why every woman is, is unique in, in what she feels is the kind of man, the male partner she wants in her life, and vice versa, of course. Yeah. Mm, I actually have friends who are very quirky and weird. Yeah. They, the first question they ask a potential male partner is, what's your horoscope? Yeah. 
Yeah. But uh, again, that's only based on your sun sign, so it's not always accurate. Right. What would you say to someone who they think, you know, okay, our sun signs are not compatible, mm -hmm. and then, okay, that, that's it, we're doomed, we can't, we, we can't be together, we can't be lovers. What, what do you tell people like that? Well, I mean, if, if, if non-compatibility is based on the sun sign, then my answer would be you have to look beyond the sun signs yes. because we are not just, you know, our sun sign. Um, but having said that, uh, I do have couples coming in for consultations, and um, I would say that there is never, ever a perfect chart. Right. Contrary to popular belief, you know, um, there could be someone who's right for you, but someone who's right need not be perfect. Mm. So there's a difference between someone being perfect for you and someone who's perfect. Right? Yes. So I, what I would say is that sometimes the right relationship is the one in which you go. You right? get to evolve. You evolve. Yes. Right. So you adopt the challenges mm. into your life and you, know, you see the challenges as blessings actually. Yeah. Because yes. you see when partners don't agree on something and that's when you have to defend your beliefs, yes. right? And in doing so, you get to know yourself all that much better. Yes, you get better awareness of yourself. It's in, true, in yeah. sense, yes. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I would say in, in couple consultations, um, we do spend a lot of time talking about where the, the energies don't match, right? But then that's what people come for, right? Because then they're looking for a way in which to say, okay, how do I match up with you, right? Mm. Um, and, and in, in doing so, you find that that compromise is what draws people together. Mm. Right? So astrology can actually be used to better your existing relationships and work out the kinks and issues and problems. So people can come to you and say, you know, what do we need? What, how do we remedy it? These are our signs and you know, there's a clash. How can we smoothen things out? Right? But astrology can also obviously be used to you know, allow you to seek a better potential, a better fit for you before you even start the relationship. Yes, of course, because yeah. nobody wants to grow all the time in their relationships. It, it, gets, yes. it gets very tiring if you're fighting all the time, having to defend yourself. So in, for every relationship to work, we're going to need a lot of compatible elements as well. Mm. So that helps when people are, for example, they're, they're both very mental people, right? They like word games, you know? They like long conversations and they don't get too emotional. Both parties don't get too emotional about things, for example, right? So if you have one very emotional person and one not emotional person, that becomes a problem. But when both are not so emotional, they prefer to discuss things, that's perfectly fine. So that's, that's how, and, and you also find that compatible elements mean people have uh, similar interests, right? They both like to cook or they both love to travel. So that goes a long way to getting people to get along with each other. Mm. You know, based on your perspective, right, what you say, uh, people who are more similar, mm -hmm. like birds of feather flock together and if they're more similar, they get more opportunities and more possibilities for the relationship to, to grow and develop in, in a harmonious and peaceful manner or do the other thing opposites attract mm. right which one which one I, I'm gonna be a chicken here and say <laughs> that uh, you're gonna need a balance of both, both. Uh, compatible com, 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 ca, compatible and incompatible elements at the same time um, for the simple reason that um, someone who's very similar to you the truth is, okay, if we look at this from a psychological standpoint, um, many of us, we haven't, we haven't accepted ourselves 100%. And when you find somebody who is very, very similar to you, you're forced to confront the parts of yourself that you don't quite like. Right? So um, when people are too similar, you find that um, getting along, surprisingly, is not so easy. Uh, it's, well, it's actually easier when somebody is different from Different you. from the opposite of you. That's a really good answer to me. I, this better answer than I expected, you know. Yes, yeah, I, I really yeah. think that, you know, for it to work, you should have a combination of similar interests, mm. but also different enough for it to be challenging, for it to be interesting, yeah. right? And, but also different only in the, the areas that don't matter as much, perhaps, the secondary issues, yeah. and then, but you need to be similar with your core values, mm. your core beliefs. You see, if, like for, for one of the couples I was seeing, the, the lady is quite a couch potato. Yes. She, she likes being at home. Right? But there are times when she, she thinks it's, it's too much, that I should go out and do something. Now imagine if the husband is the same as well and they both are couch potatoes. Right? On the superficial level, that's great, right? But yeah. on, on, the, on the other hand, they never get any exercise. They never go out and they never meet people. Right? But if the husband is a different kind of character and he's basically saying, hey, someone's having a party, we should go. Right? So it means that occasionally she's going to say, I'm, I don't want to go. Occasionally she's going to say, okay, fine, let's go. You yeah, know? So then it encourages her to get out of the house. So it's yeah. a win-win situation in that sense, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. That's, that's very interesting. And yeah. 
thank you for sharing that example. No that was a good yeah. example. Yeah. I mean, could you tell us a little bit about some of the upcoming courses, mm -hmm. events, and workshops that you're holding? Uh, this year I'm going to be a lot more focused on teaching astrology. Uh, I've had many people who come to me and say this is really useful. Um, do you have a systematic way of teaching a layman person how to understand charts? Uh, this is exactly what I'm doing nowadays. So the course is an intense two-day course uh, and I'm even glad to say that we are, in we are offering installment plans right now. So um, it's going to be very easy for people to take up the course uh, and what's more I'm offering a free lifetime recourse. So once you sign up for the course, um, because there's so much to learn, no one learns it in two yes. days. So many of my students have asked, like, May, can I come back? Can I come back and do the course again? Right? You can do so, and it's absolutely free. I'm not charging for recourses. This is a very generous offer. No Where can the audience go to sign up or find out more? Oh yes, uh, please visit my website. So that's my URL. So that's www.selfstrology.com. Right? Or you can always email me uh, at may at selfstrology.com. Right. Thank you very much, me. Thank you so much Lee. for your sharing. Yes. It was very enlightening and very interesting. We hope to have you again in the future video to speak about a different segment or facet of astrology. Thank you. I really appreciate this. Okay. Thank you guys for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for more interesting videos. Thank you.